In this video, I'm going to take you through the new updates in the rich content editor in Canvas LMS. So if you are a teacher or an educator using Canvas teacher classes, then this video is for you. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Ashley Espinosa, and I have an entire series on Canvas tutorials. I'll link that below if you wanna check that out. But I just wanna add this video to it because now we have the new rich content editor or the RCE box in your entire class. And I wanna take you through answering a bunch of the questions that I've been getting from most of you a lot lately, which is how do I link a video and where is everything at and what does this all mean now? So let me take you right in and let's look at this together and kind of break it down really quickly. So let's dive in. Here we go. Now this is a, what you're going to see in any of the RCE boxes, whether you're in, you know, home or modules or assignments or discussions or even in the quizzes one or pages, this is what you get now. This is the new updated version of the Rich Content Editor. Let me answer the first question that almost everybody <laughs> asks is, where do I put my YouTube link? How do I embed that? So that's the first question. Let's get to that one first. The way I would suggest doing this, there's two ways but that I've discovered. The first way is go up to where it says insert at the very top and then scroll down to where it says embed. We're going to click on that and then it's gonna give you an embed code. Go over to the YouTube video you want. Let's say you wanna embed this video here. I went to YouTube, I found this video, Canvas course setup that I created very recently, wherever the video is that you want. After you find it in YouTube, go to the share button with the arrow down here, click on that. Now, instead of copying this normal code that you see, you wanna go over to where it says embed in the white circle. Click on that with the two arrows back and forth. You're gonna see this embed code. Now, don't freak out, it's not super crazy, but if you want to copy the whole part of it, all you need to do is go down and click copy. Okay. If you see that it's not allowing you to copy this code, that means that the person that posted that video on YouTube does not allow embedding in other areas. You can actually turn that off on your channel. I could turn it off on mine and you can't embed my videos anywhere, but I have mine on because I want you to watch them. So we're gonna click copy on that. Now we have the code copied to our clipboard. I am using a Mac just for a reference, depending on what you use. Let's go back into our course. Here we are in that embed code. We're gonna click on it. We're gonna go up to edit. You can't see all of this on mine, but I'm gonna click edit, and then I'm gonna click paste. Now we have that code in there. Click on the submit button on the right, and then there is your video. Yes. All right, that's the best way to do it, I think, personally, but you do have another way that you can do it. This depends on your, your, your um, university or your college or your school, your institution, if you have this option. Go over to the little button. It looks like a plug-in button. It's for your apps or your plugins. Click on that. After you do that, you can search for YouTube. Now, you might see, for example, on this one, there's no results found. That means that it's not allowing me to do that. I'm gonna click cancel. I'm gonna click over into, this is a, a free version that I'm showing you on. I'm gonna actually now click over into one of mine from an institution that I've taught at before. And I'm gonna open my rich content editor here. So here we are. I'm gonna click the plugin. It drops down and it offers me YouTube, the option. If it doesn't, click view all and you can search for it. It's like an app and this means this university is allowing you to use YouTube. You can go up here, you can type in the, um, uh, let's say history music. Go into the box, type in the video you want, whatever it may be. Let's take this one. We want to click embed. And then if you click the right arrow button before you click embed, if you click the right arrow button down, you can embed it in a different size. If you want it to do a small video, a medium or a large, let's click the small video. It's going to automatically embed that. Now you see it over here on the left side. Some universities I've noticed do not have that option though. So go the embed route first. If you do find that you can use it in the plugin for YouTube, great, go for that. All right, so that was the first question that everybody's been asking me. Now let me go back and give you some other information. I'm gonna go back to a clear blank one so you can see. Let's delete that video. If you ever wanna delete that YouTube video, just literally hit the back button, the delete button, and it should pick it up. Now, you have two different bars here. You have this top bar, edit, view, insert, format, tools, and table. Really similar to that is the bar below that is broken down for you a bit more in detail. So you kind of have two options that you can work with depending on what way is better for you. 
Let's start with the edit bar. If we click on edit, we obviously have the undo and redo button if you deleted something and you want to undo that. We also have the cut button if we want to cut a section and copy and paste, just like you would in your toolbar on your computer, the bar at the very top. Same type of idea. Okay, we can paste from other pages. If you want to copy something from a PDF document or a Google Doc that you already have notes from and you want to paste it into here, we can do that as well. And then you have select all, similar to what you have on your, on your own computer. If we click on the view button, we have full screen or in editor code. If we click on full screen, that means it's going to take us really wide now and now we have a full version of what that, video, of what that page looks like so it's not just that tiny box. When you want to get out of this, just hit the escape button on your computer. Once we hit escape, that will automatically take us back to where we were. We also have the insert button. Here you can insert a link, so a link for them to send them somewhere else, like a hyperlink. Remember, we do want to try to keep them in Canvas as much as possible unless you're referring them to watch something or see something and then come back. Here's where you upload your images. Remember it used to be on like the far right hand side over here where it was all kind of wonky and whatnot. Now they've put it over here in this one little insert area. So we can insert an image by uploading, choosing from other images that we've used before in other courses in our bank that they kind of keep in the cloud or user images. So this is where you upload your, your photos and put them right in. We can also upload media. You can also, right here, click on Upload or Record Media. Okay, we can upload it from our computer or click on the Record button and you could immediately have, I'm going to switch cameras here so you can see me, you can immediately now record from your laptop camera into your computer. So it makes it a lot easier. Say you want to hit start recording and record a little welcome video for them and just say, hey everybody, I'm so glad you're here. Let me show you around a little bit and tell you what this class is going to be about. Can't wait to meet you. My name is Ashley Espinosa. I use a pronoun she, her, and I can't wait to take this, guide you through this class. You can literally upload it right there and be done. So use that. Okay, so the media. You also have documents. You can upload a document. If you want to upload a PDF or anything else like that, you can do that right here. You have equations if you teach math or other types of courses that use that. Tables, if you want to insert a table or some, of, some time, of some kind into your course. And then that embed code where we can actually embed code into it very easily. And then also you can create a horizontal line if you'd like to, which is really, really great if you want to break something up in your page. If we click the format button, here is where all of your text is that you can really customize your um, page so that it feels a little bit more personal and less very strict like it was before. You have many options here. Um, you also have your options out in formats for headings. I like this. I use this a lot. It makes it accessible for students that have the readers. So you can divide it up by different headings, different options here, underlining, strike through, blocks, aligning, left, center, justifying it. You have all these options along with font sizes, along with alignment, all kinds of other options here. Text color, if you want to color the text, if you want to color the background, all of these options. Same thing for tools here. You have a word count now, which is really kind of cool if you need that. And here are your apps or your plugins that you're using if you use those. And then the last one at the top on table is if you want to create different tables that you want to put into your course. Maybe you want to break it up into columns because you're describing something to them. That's there as well for you. So that's an overview of that line. The next overview is this section down here, which is really exactly what we just talked about in this dropdown, but in a, an, an easy to grab quickly um, format. So here is your font size that you can do. Here is your headings, bold, italic, underline. Here on this one is where you can change the color of the text, which I really think is great because before you, you didn't have all of this design in, in Canvas. I know I see a lot of folks out there which, you know, do whatever works best for you, but I see a lot of folks that are designing their Canvas pages to be really fancy and they're doing it outside and then they're dropping that in in another program into this as an image. I really, 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 really highly suggest that you use the formatting in Canvas. And the reason why is because 
it does start to confuse students that are using the readers, meaning a student that is blind, that can't see the page, and Canvas has a built-in reader to make it accessible for every student, that it's going to read the text. And if you use these headers, it's going to tell that student that it's a heading when it reads it back to them. And if you're just putting a photo in with, with all of this fancy text, it probably more than likely is not going to read that PDF or that document like it would. This is why I say everything you can, make it accessible, use the way the box has been given to you. So it really does help all of your students. So you have that breakdown here as well. Okay, here is your links if you want to do external or course links. Here is your images where you can upload an image really quickly. Here is where you can upload record media just like we did over up here in the top toolbar. And then here's where you're going to upload your PDFs and documents. So it's the same kind of thing, just in a different format. Top toolbar, bottom really detailed toolbar. Here are your apps that you can search for if you use Google. I don't have a lot in this one because it's a free version. And then here's your justification if you want to center it, put it on the left side. Here's where you can do your bullet points, you know, if you want to ABC it or number it for a list, which I do a lot. And then if you want to do a picture and you can um, have it go, have the text go around or the left side, I haven't used that quite a lot just yet. And here's your equations and your table bar. If you want to insert a table, you can do that here. Mathematical um, elements. And then here's your embedding code on the far right. So it's just different, two different ways that you can access what you need. Now, let me show you some examples. This is actually what I am doing. Let me go to an assignment I'm editing. The last thing I want to show you is on the very bottom here on the tool on the um, the box, you're going to see a couple of other elements. This one on the very right with the dots that look like a rectangle are going if you click it and hold it, you can drag down and make that box bigger. So I don't have to work in that tiny little box that I was in before. I can drag it down and make it as big as I want or as small as I want. I can also click over here on the right hand side, the arrow that's going diagonally, that will make it full screen. I love working in the full screen mode right now because it makes it easier to view it. But if you want to get out of that full screen, just hit the escape button and it takes you right back to where you were. Here's where you can click on the code and you can switch to the HTML code if you know how to do that. If you don't, don't worry about it, just click it to get back out of it. Here's your word count. Here's your accessibility. I highly suggest checking this on every single page. Um, it'll tell you if there are any issues detected. No issues in this one. This is an old assignment. Uh, and then you have this little box over here which clicks, it looks like a little keyboard. Click it, it will take you into the shortcuts and it will tell you some shortcuts that may be helpful for you if you're wanting to go in and out of that. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to go full screen on this so we can all see it together. And I want to show you how you can use this to your advantage in pages that you're recreating or duplicating. Let's say, for example, this video was not here. Now, another option I have is to, again, I could, um, I am, this is a video I embedded earlier in this video, but if you wanted to embed a video, I could just hit the enter bar where it says include, and now my blank bar is my space or my arrow is right there, my, I have it clicked on there. I would go up here and I would actually click on the embed code, the cloud, go find the video that you want from YouTube, click the embed code, we're gonna paste it in there, there is my code, click submit, and here is my video. Maybe the video is old or updated or outdated and I wanna put it on there. I can just click my arrow right after the next video and I can delete that old one that I already have. A Couple of the options that you have, let's say, you don't have a header, and actually for this one I don't have a header. This is an old, um, this is an old little assignment that I did. So I'm going to highlight this performance analysis essay two. I'm going to go up to the paragraph where it says paragraph and click the drop down, and I'm actually going to make that heading two, which is the top heading. Now, say you want to make this centered. Again, highlight it. Go over to the lines where it says align and click on the center button. Now it's in the center, okay? And then let's say I want to maybe space this down and maybe I want to add a bullet point. I'm going to go to the left-hand side where it says viewing, Put, click on it there. And then I'm going to click on the arrow down for the bullet points and let's just click this bullet. That looks nice. Again, I'm going to click before the A on YouTube link. I'm going to go down to the bullets at the top, click on the same bullet and it pops it over. I say this all the time in my videos, but more bullets, 
less paragraphs, less sentence. If you have so much text that it reads like a book, the students more than likely are not going to read it. So I highly suggest doing everything in bullet points. Uh, another thing we can do, actually this is actually written wrong, so let's, let's fix that. Why not? It's telling me. Perfect. And I'd actually capitalize Amazon. Another thing you might want to do is highlight. So maybe I want to highlight this section right here, select it, and then let's click on this and this little pen tool. Let's click yellow. Cool. And that highlights that element right there that you can see. And then maybe I want to change the this right here. This is another example. This huge uh, link that I have because I really want them to be able to see an example of MLA format. Instead of putting this entire link right here, I'm going to select it. I'm actually going to edit and I'm going to copy it. I'm actually I'm going to cut it. Let's cut it. So now I have it cut and I want to paste it. Instead of having that huge link there, for MLA format examples, visit this site, period. Let's highlight this, the word this. Let's go up to the link, drop down, click external links. And then right now, the text that I've highlighted is, I left the TH, the T out, but that's good, you get the point. Let's click on link and I'm going to edit paste the one I just cut or go find the link that you want to send them to. Click done and now when I, this word, this is hyperlinked to that MLA format example site I want them to go to versus having that huge text there. Now they can just say click on this site, they click on it and it takes them to them, it takes them to that site. So it makes it a lot easier. So that's just a couple of examples of the new RCE box and what you have available to you. Already it looks a little bit nice, nicer, right? Maybe I want to make this font a little bit smaller or maybe I want to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Whatever works for you. But you can really start to um, make this work for you and make it a little bit more colorful with, again, without having to go into other sites and design something and bring it back in. Remember, we really want to keep them inside of Canvas. We don't want them going in and out. And on top of that, we really want to make sure that we're not designing outside and then using other PDFs documents and just slapping it in here because it really does make it hard for them to read it on the mobile version because it's going to format within the platform. So again, just use as much as you can within Canvas and keep in mind that we understand that learning online is different than learning face-to-face. -face. Try to use more video, more audio. You could record an audio file for them and implement every single thing right here in this new RCE box. Don't forget when you're done making all those changes, go to the bottom right hand corner and click the save button so it's saved and don't forget to click published if you haven't done so already. All right, that's a crash course in the update for the rich content editor in Canvas. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them below. Happy teaching, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. I have new videos coming out for you every single week. All right, happy teaching, everyone. <laughs>